And they also have Jason Williams. The only edge that Maryland has, they have more players, but that won't be enough. I'm going to tell you why Maryland will win this game, Greg. They'll win because they will defend the three-point shot. They will get the long rebound. They also have more size and quality depth up front. And I really think Terrence Morris will step up and step out and have a significant game today. That's why I think Maryland wins this game. Okay, Bill, do you think it makes a difference that these teams have met not just once before this season, but three times? Yes, it does. And it would help to have lost the last game. But that wasn't the case, so it won't make that much of a difference difference when you have the single best player Jason Williams that's all you need the all rest right. of the guys just have to do their job I got to respectfully disagree with my partner <laughs> I don't know if Jason Williams has been the outstanding player in this tournament he's Shane Battier certainly without question but he struggled against Maryland Maryland has the offensive firepower Greg to score points as long as they don't turn it over if they do that I think their size advantage up front is going to make a difference and they'll defend Duke behind that three-point line make them come inside a little bit let me ask you this there is does the difference in coaching experience make a difference. This is Coach K's ninth trip here. Gary Williams is first. Huge difference. Maryland likely to get overrun, overrun by the distractions, by the obstacles. The only time Maryland to be nervous is before the first TV timeout. If then, once they throw it up and get banged around and sweat, it'll be two balls, it'll be two rims and a ball. How'd you get so confused? Uh, we'll continue this battle another time. Coming up, Maryland against Duke. Jim Nance and Billy Packer calling the action from courtside right after this. Who will play Arizona Monday night for the national championship? The Wildcats are in, and it'll be either Maryland or Duke, the winner to advance to the title game Monday night. These ACC rivals with three of the most memorable games of the year in college basketball about to square off for a fourth time, and this time at the Final Four as the Maryland Terrapins take the floor here in Minneapolis. Arizona is in with its 19-point victory over Michigan State. Jim Nance back with Billy Packer. Is there any reason why the fourth matchup won't be an epic battle like the first three? It really should be, Jim. I think back 76, Michigan, Indiana, 85, Georgetown, Villanova, same kind of situation. All right, Billy, let's talk about some of the key points for this game. Game two today. First with Maryland. Well, for Maryland, I think one of the things we're going to see out of this basketball team is against all odds. And they did it two years in a row. They've gone to Cameron Indoor Stadium, shot over 50% and won. And this man right here, Juan Dixon, has scored 60 in Cameron Indoor against Duke University in the last two games. He has been outstanding. Now, former roommates this summer, Steve Blake, and Jason Williams, Blake has really had his number, forced 10 turnovers against how about, the great All-American. How about the Blue Devils, Billy? Well, we're looking at Batman and Robin. The two top first-team All-Americans for Duke University have been on fire in this tournament. No reason to expect them not to continue in that regard. Now, also, we have two guys that have really done a great job in regard to their overall play. Dunleavy and Duhan, the double Ds for Duke really come up with big points as we see Duan doing here against Southern California just last week. Boozer in the box. He had 16 points and seven rebounds against Maryland in that game at Duke until he got hurt. And Jim, then things turned around. Maryland's first ever appearance at a Final Four. Terrapins and Blue Devils in just a moment. How about this? These two teams on a roll late. Terps won 10 of their last 11, the lone loss to Duke while the Devils won 11 of their final 12, the lone loss to Maryland. They meet again, and let's meet the lineups with Jackie Bowe. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome for tonight's semifinal championship game between the University of Maryland's Terrapins and the Duke University Blue Devils. Let's meet the starting lineups. At forward from Maryland, a senior listed at 6'9 from Frederick, Maryland, wearing number 44, Terrence Morris. At forward for Duke, a sophomore listed at 6'7 from Lake Oswego, Oregon. At forward for Maryland, a junior listed at 6'6 from Rainy, Louisiana, wearing number one, Baron Mouton. 
at forward for Duke, a senior listed at 6'8 from Birmingham, Michigan, number 31, Shade Bavier. At center for Maryland, a junior listed at 6'8 from Silver Spring, Maryland, number 35, Lonnie Baxter. At center for Duke, a sophomore listed at 6'11 from Tampa, Florida, number 20, Casey Sanders. At guard for Maryland, a sophomore listed at 6'3 from Miami Lakes, Florida. Number 25. At guard for Duke, a freshman listed at 6'1 from Slide Chris Duhon. Number three, Juan Dixon. The head coach for Maryland is Gary Williams. And the head coach for Duke is Mike Krzyzewski. Mike Krzyzewski's ninth Final Four, Gary Williams, and his alma mater. He took over the program that was on life support just short of the death penalty when he came back. Well, Jim. Alma mater. How about these uh, Packer points here, Billy? The Baxter factor. This young man has played outstanding basketball in the tournament so far, was the outstanding player in the West Regional. He is a force down low for Duke to handle. The good bat and the ugly is Morris. He had one for 11 against Georgetown. O for O field goals against George Mason. Came back with an 11-10 game with 10 rebounds against Stanford. This is what he's got to do. Almost complete that Shane Battier. What more could this young man do other than win a national That's title? It. Just one more. That's right. That's all that's setting him back. And Isaiah in blue, I'm talking about Jason Williams. Isaiah Thomas is the greatest all-around point guard I've seen in a Final Four. And let's see if Jason Williams can top him. Isaiah won a national crown at 81. The Devils, in this spot right here, national semifinals, have won five straight. Advancing to the 90 finals when they lost. Back-to-back -back titles, Indianapolis, Minneapolis, 91 and 2. And then losses to Arkansas 94 in the final. And then UConn two years back. Well, you start talking about the Mike Krzyzewski legacy. And we have sitting right behind us John Wooden. And you can only think of two guys in regard to the Final Four. Wooden and Dean Smith that are on the same caliber of this guy who's still so young. He would win the championship Monday. He would tie Knight, trail only Wooden and Ruck for most championships by a coach. And Maryland coming out with the first possession. Good steal on the jump that time by Morris. Straight man to man by Duke. Baxter puts it up, front of the rim. Had a good shot, pretty good defense. Sanders, confidence mounting every game. We'll see how long Sanders stays out there and before we see Boozer in this lineup. Sanders, as everybody realizes, has become the starting center since Boozer has been injured. Inside, Duke trying to work it over to Sanders and last touch by Merrill. Not a good job by Sanders sealing to establish the passing lane for Battier. He stayed away from it, so a lot of times it's not the passer's fault. Side comes Blake. He played against the Devils in the three games this year. Outside, so and he got it. Good, the bad, and the ugly starts out good, doesn't he? And has the ability to step out and take that shot. Williams. Nothing there, could rebound. Morris has now had a tap, a rebound, and a three. Juan Dixon broke early. He wanted it. Wasn't there. Bouton swiped away by Sanders, but he gets it back. Well, one of the things we thought, Jim, about Maryland is the fact that they have played Duke the three times and are not in awe of the Blue Devils. Actually, statistically, in the three games, they really lead, even though they only had one win. Williams. And over the back, Sanders. Just like Arizona, the first five in this game, Maryland. Well, that was Jackson, number 20, Casey Sanders. So a good start for the Terrapins. I really feel that it's an advantage to Maryland to play Duke as opposed to either Michigan State or Arizona because of this familiarity and the confidence they have. Duke, you never give up on the man who has the ball. He's the most 
difficult guy to handle. And Duke gave up on him. We're going to see Boozer quickly in this game. They've got to establish an inside. There's nothing there for Duke. Duhan to Dixon. Push. Going the other way? No, it's no, going it's against push. Duke. Dunleavy didn't have to push. Not a good foul. Mike Krzyzewski trying to work these officials early, but they're not seeing any part of it right there. That was an obvious foul. A lot of weapons right now offensively on the floor for uh, Maryland. Your point with Duke being the opponent once they got here, people wondered about first-time jitters at a Final Four. The familiarity of the opponent certainly makes it a little bit easier, but here's the steal, Duhon. Looking for the Devils first point. Back to Sanders, and he'll have a chance for a three-point play. Big break right there. Sanders, not a guy that you want to have handling the ball on a fast break. He does not have the greatest hands on the move. But he makes a play here, probably gets a break from the officials and the fact that the, the foul is taken before he releases and he gets the basket as well as going to the line. So Dixon commits it. Sanders pauses. Sophomore who came in after Boozer got injured in that game against Maryland. Game number two, that is, and missed six. They won all six without him. He came back to Boozer at the East Regional and saw 22 minutes in each of the two games, UCLA and USC, traveling. Well, what we have here is a nice little change up by Mike Krzyzewski using Jason Williams on the high-scoring Dixon, which puts Duhon on Blake. Blake normally has the ball in his hands a lot. Dixon plays well without the ball, so this may save some of Williams' energy on the offensive end. And he's being guarded by Blake. Very aggressive here. The lob, it's not there. Dixon has got Mouton. That shot up over Sanders, who is a good shot blocker. Possession more important. Boozer and James will be checking in on the next whistle. We're really talking about two starters that are now playing on the bench. Boy, Duke getting a lot of calls early in this ball game. Good penetration by Williams. Duke knows how to get on the line as good as any team in college basketball. Here's the road for Gary Williams' team playing a lot of, uh, well, local teams, if you will. Out west they had to go to play. George Mason could have could have gotten them. Well, what do we got? Ten miles. Uh, yeah. Few miles and plus lefty Drizel, so they really had a homecoming in that regard. You know, you look at that first game though, as Williams will shoot a pair after the Mouton foul. James and Booz are checking in. It just nothing proves more of a fragile nature of this NCAA tournament than the fact George Mason had a great chance to beat Maryland. Jim, Round how, one. How often have we seen, however, Nash? for Florida when Miller hit the wing shot up buzzer to beat Butler. I think of a uh, James Messer. Happens almost oh, all. What an assist, Blake, before he came down with it. Bounced it into Baxter. That's that Baxter factor on the inside in the post. He has great hands, big bulk, much like we saw Randolph in the first game. That combination of bulk and soft hands. Boozer right away. Oh, misses the lay-in. Good idea now, though, that Duke has got a look. Blake to the corner. Dixon hit on the foul. Arm. He'll shoot three. Hit on the arm by Williams. The Devils, meanwhile, came out of the East. They have feasted on the East through Shashevsky's era. 30 and 1. Only Florida beat them when they were put in the East bracket. That was last year's Sweet 16. Monmouth and Missouri, and then UCLA and USC. All double digit wins. The only team to ever win the championship with all double digit wins. Uh, done it through the first four. Here's a young man right here. It's incredible. He did, was not he registered this year at Maryland, and since that time has really come on to be one of the really great players in the country that hasn't received national recognition, but he's been first team all conference in the ACC in the last two years. Before today, Duke's biggest deficit in the tournament was six to Missouri. They're down eight early to the Turks.
<laughs> Call on a few pals, grab a Miller Lite. It's Miller time. Hey, guys, hang it up. I'll hang up. Last week, this company's website went live. The employees are celebrating their success by gathering in revelry. They are exhilarated by the onslaught of new customers. Yet, no one has visited the server in days because no one has had to. The server's soft. Back in Minneapolis, where this is Duke senior Shane Battier's last shot at a championship ring. He says he's fueled by a memory back in 1999. He said, I remember how. In the finals took. He gave a message to Hart. He told him, forget about the fact that you're. And remember how well you've played the last three games. Jim. Well, so far, Art, thank you. Only one field goal, first eight trips, one of eight from the field of the Blue Devils. So far, Steve Blake making Jason Williams give up that basketball. He hadn't penetrated by him yet. Boozer, try nice. this move, second time, and he gets it. This team's complexion offensively changes completely now that Boozer's back in the ball game. Gives him a low post presence, so defensively, you've got to collapse a little bit to help out. That'll open up the three-point shot. Maryland working it, and it's Baxter. It only took, by the way, four minutes for all five starters to score, and Baxter's on the board again. And Baxter again. He'll force Boozer then to have to play some defensively, and there goes Williams at what he does so well. Oh, Baxter, they're going to call that a goal, It looked like it was on the way up. Oh, definitely. I thought that that ball was on the way up. Great timing by Baxter. So quick off his feet for a big man. Now watch this. How that is that it? on the no, way that, down? That was a very good block. Mm. Gary Williams agrees with us, but he doesn't get the call. Jason Williams gets the call instead. It's Baxter on the blocks again. Oh. Wings it. There's Morris rejected by Battier. surprise you, but Maryland out-rebounded coming into this game. Duke by 31 rebounds in the three games they've played. Get an interactive Final Four experience with fan polls, in-game features, audio clips, or AOL keyword CBS Sports Line. Now, if you're Duke, you might want Duhon to bring the ball up, except for one thing, he's being guarded by Dixon, who was the number one guy in steals in the ACC in the year. Duke good looks from three. Morris does a good job being able to stand out there with Battier. Here comes an overrule. It's Maryland ball. First signal had gone Duke. That was Battier's first attempt. Miller, now, Miller. now you make the call. Well, there's yeah, no, no question, question about the call. That, but first, no, it was going the other way. Du Duhan out. James, second time inserted into the lineup. James will be on Dixon now. James, a very good defensive basketball player. Matches up well with Dixon, even though Dixon has a little bit of quickness on him. But that puts Williams on Blake. Blake, what an assist to Dixon. And so far, Blake is not only negating Jason Williams' penetration, he's getting some of his own, keeping Williams occupied. Lock, lock called on Baxter. This Duke team, as we always know, a great team getting to the foul line. They've actually made three more foul shots than their opponents have taken all year and they've actually gone to the line 290 times more than their opponents martisic a senior who's played in more games at maryland been a part of more victories than any terrapin in history checks in with holden taj holden who can really shoot it put on quite a show here yesterday during the practice talking from midcourt dunleavy too strong sanders offensive class and he has given him a couple of big plays all that was a great job by sanders if he had tried to do anything else other than dunk the ball he's got no chance danny miller also seeing his first play for maryland very ball. very valuable sub here a good ball handler an experienced starter most of his career. Started all of it last year, did Miller. There's Dixon. Oh. Holden tucks it in. There is that touch, Jim. Holden actually misjudged his leap that time, but that great touch of his put it in. Duke has not made a three yet. That is where they are so expert. And he traveled. Give Holden credit for a little defensive play. True. 
Watch right here as Taj Holden actually mistimes things, but there is that beautiful touch mm. he has right off the fingertips, just as you see on a on a beautiful fadeaway jump shot. Had the great touch. He can shoot a straight up oh, jump shot without a one step start to it all from midcourt. Incredible form. And the Terrapins have brought in Drew Nicholas, number 12, for the first time. This is a deep team, particularly in the front court. Blake, what a pass. Martisic gets it back. Second try. Yes. Now, Martisic's greatest game was in his freshman year when he led the Terrapins to a victory over them, number one, North Carolina. How about this, Billy? Maryland's missed nine shots. They've retrieved the nine shots seven times, seven offensive boards. Well, they think they're Michigan State, huh? Wow. Battier. Tough shot. Tipped up and tipped out. Dun Nichols. Dunleavy has had three easy chances today. Didn't get any of them to go. Step back three, and Blake puts Maryland up double digits. Well, it was already, but now 13. Mike Krzyzewski asking for a walk, but getting no calls here. Timeout, two. Chevy Trucks, eye vision. What do you have here, Billy? Well, ball's going to go inside. As I said, they have a presence offensively when Boozer's in the low post. And you can see Maryland drops down. That opens up the outside shot. Ball goes back into Boozer, so his inside presence pays off for Duke University. A nice move. Haven't been a lot of good moments, though, for the Devils. Down 13, been out-rebounded 16-4. to four. Well, two things really come out to you as well, Jim. No three-point shooting, and basically Jason Williams, who's not in the ball game right now, has been very quiet on penetration. Blake did a great job on him. Away from the ball. Martisic down on the inside. Cheap foul. And we have the under 12 official timeout. This year, Billy, there have been some wild swings in every game. Absolutely. Of course, these teams love to play a frenetic type pace. Maryland came back from 14 down to tie this game in the ACC tournament. Had it tied and then lost in the last minute and three seconds. I mean, one and three point ten seconds. Not only that, they had scored the first 10 points of the game, then found themselves down 14. We see these coaches playing a little game here. Williams going back in. Blake sits down while Williams out of the game. Nice move by Gary Williams. Thursday on CBS. Find out what more than 20 million viewers a week already know. That CSI is the hottest new show on television, and don't miss it. CSI, crime scene investigation, Thursday after Survivor. One more for... Battier, that was called on hold, and that's the first point for the Jason National Williams. Player of the Year in almost uh, every every poll. Williams comes back. And, and let's see if Blake comes back in this game with Williams there. Did such a good job, and he has Williams' number so far. Sanders tries to tap it back and can't get it. And quickly and out of reach for Holden. Not a bad idea with a 12-point lead to go for that. Holden was breaking. He just had a bad angle for the pass. And now it's going to be Dixon, one of the top defenders in the ACC, playing Jason Williams. Nicholas on Duhon. Three Maryland starters will be checking back into the lineup momentarily. Battier steps in. The two is deflected. Great job by Martisic coming out, realizing Battier. Here's Dixon going to the floor. Needs some help. Into the air. First time Duke was able to get this game going their way. No call on that jump shot. This game is wild. Martisic underneath to secure it. This time settle it down. But Jim, the seven-footer went out on Battier, who had faked holding up in the air. A good defensive play. You don't see Duke offensively playing their game at all. You can see Battier knowing Holden will take that shot, so he's playing him tight. Great pass. Martisic to Miller, and Maryland's on the board again. Largest lead of the game, it's 14. I haven't seen Duke, and primarily because Jason Williams is not getting his game going. Oh, what a shot. <laughs> Left-handed, off the glass for Dunleavy. One of the DD men, Dunleavy is growing into that six foot nine inch body of his, so fluid. Maryland seems more confident. 
confident in pace than does Duke. Oh, look at Dixon. Three-pointer. Maryland not a great three-point shooting basketball team, but Dixon certainly knows how to take it, as does Holden. Williams. To Sanders in traffic. Comes out with it. Dunleavy open. He'll fire it. All kinds of action underneath. And there was Sanders inside with not the great hands. Didn't have a chance to put things off. It's going to be a foul on Maryland, it looks like. Yes, on Drew Nicholas. And Duke University not able to get the penetration and kickouts that they normally have in a game, which makes up a big part of their offense. They bring back Baxter, Morris, and Blake, and Mouton. And Blake goes right over to say hello to his former roommate. Jason, how you doing? I'm back out on the floor. He has really done a fine job against him so far. Yeah, in fact, the last two matchups against Williams, he's had 11 assists in each game. Tough pass, and Mouton chases it down. Dixon's taken middle, and a reach in. James it, saved it. Jeff, Duke. much as the same case we saw in the first game with Tom Izzo, I think Mike Krzyzewski's looking out on the floor and saying, I don't recognize this team that's playing. Duke really out of sync here. And give a lot of credit to Maryland, just as in the case with Arizona. They're making them out of sync. Blake and Baxter had his back turn. Ooh, Battier almost dragged that foot. Uh, smart play on his part, though, because his teammates ran away from the pass. Williams gives it up last second. James comes right back to him in the corner. And Battier's open in the lane for two. You see what Maryland's doing defensively? They're running right out and challenging the three-point shot, allowing Duke to pump fake and drive around, but they're taking away the three. Jason Williams might have got by with one right there. He's got the one foul to start off with, and if you're Mike Krzyzewski, you need that young man on the floor. Dixon's got speed over James. Baxter helps him with a pick, and, and he takes him. it down with another three. You're not going to be able to hedge move with Boozer on a Dixon. Dixon's too quick for him when he steps out. He just goes right around him on a curl. 11 for Dixon. Tough pass, Mouton got a hand on it, Maryland makes the steal. Baxter's up ahead, and they find him. Oh, and he is stuffed, they're gonna call the foul on Dunleavy. Boy, that was all ball. It's a very strange game, the way that's being called. Remember the Jefferson stuff in the first game? Boy, this is a great block. How can that be a foul? Oh, there was no contact. No contact at all on that, with the body or anything else. That's as oh. clean a block as you can have. Mike Krzyzewski, when he is not really working the referees, you know he's starting to get steamed. Oh. You can fry an egg on his forehead right now. And, it, and he's saying, who's the foul on? Oh, now they say the foul's on Battier. He wasn't even in the play. And over here, Ted Hillary, one of the officials, points to Dunleavy. They're going to go over and, and make sure that this is corrected. Without question, it has to be Dunleavy, Dunleavy but it certainly wasn't his foul at all because he made a clean block. In any case, it'll be Baxter, the factor, on the line. Did you notice, Jim, his great hands on that play? In the open court, he just can catch the ball so well. So Dunleavy, even though it was all ball, gets charged. And Baxter, the West Regional MVP, will shoot one more. So two on Dunleavy, he's out. Well, he was 7-16 seven and seven, 16 against Georgia State, 19 points, 14 rebounds, 26 and 14 against Georgetown, and 24 and 6 against Stanford. Move to big first yes. half. Makes it home. The young man transferred from Tulane having a big first half with his team, a big lift. 19 points in front. And one shot. And Duke gets it back. I was about to say one and done. They're going the other way. Jason Williams having a hard time getting rid of Blake. Blake is so used to him, he stays right in front of him. He always tries to take him off the three-point line and makes him dribble penetrate. Boozer open with Baxter on him. Kicks it out, Battier. Much needed three. Looks like Morris may have got a hand on it. Back out, Williams. Whoosh, off the front of the rim. James with the putback. He knows all about doing something like that around the basket against that's, Maryland. That's almost a replay of ACC tournament semifinal. A put back for a basket. And a pass to the finals where Duke wore out North Carolina. 
for their third straight ACC tournament championship. And that's against James. You know, you can make a question here, Jim, that almost every call that's been made could have gone the other way. Maryland doubling up two. Back in Minneapolis with our singular sky cam. Duke, the first team to go to the Final Four with two All-Americas in 25 years. The last to do that, Indiana in Scott, 76. Scott May, Kent Benson. But the All-Americas are really struggling here for the Blue Devils at the start. Battier and Williams each one for five from the field, Billy. And Jim, in the second half against Southern California, they went cold as well. So right now, in the in, in basically what amounts to a game, they're two for 13 and five for 18, Battier and Williams. So really have gone cold. And a push off called on Williams, his second. Uh, Thursday on Survivor, seven castaways left, five episodes to go. Don't miss an all-new Survivor Thursday here on CBS, followed by CSI. Blake got hit in the side of the head. He's holding his, uh, his ear, but I guess he's okay. It, it, and for a moment, it looked like he tried to call yeah. timeout. Yeah, he called. Oh, no, a call for a call. He turned it yeah. he, he Before really, he took the inbound pass, he signaled for a timeout. He is really in pain. He's got that ear ringing right now. I want to see if Gary Williams would get him out of there. The, the officials are not stopping it. Jason Williams goes right on by. Follow up, no. Back to Battier. Blake reaches in to help force the steal. Mouton is having the big first half. Look at his speed. Lead to two. Blake looking to the bench. He wants out. And, and what the official, what Gary Williams is trying to do is get a free timeout by having the official realize there's a man injured out here. But no help. To the corner, James. Duke cannot buy a three. Out to Baxter, to Blake. He'll tough it out on this possession. With a three, you oh. bet. Oh. And I'll tell you, the Blue Devils are in trouble. Now, Blake, with that bad ear, Jim, makes a steal because of it, and then he hits a three. The Blue Devils' ears are ringing right now, too. They are down 22 with 6.40 to go in the first half. James, yes, last needed. The fifth-year senior, part of five ACC regular season championships. That is something will never be duplicated. Trying to bring him back. Oh, and a near steal, Duhon. Blake off the floor, off Duhon. And Blake will get to come out at last. Nicholas replaces him. How did he get hurt? Well, you see, he'll come right back here. He gets hit on the shoulder blade by Baxter and really gives him a ring. But because of that, he made the big steal on Battier on the other end when he was holding his ear and then came down and hit the three. I think he'll be all right. He'll feel a lot better when he looks up at the scoreboard and sees how his team is dominating this game. Nicholas drives, and it's a block call. Block call against Boozer. That puts Nicholas on the line. Mike Krzyzewski looking at a Duke team that he has never seen before. Access live head-to-head -head team and player stats through this interactive telecast available on Ultimate. TV. So Drew Nicholas, he had quite a game uh, late in the season at Virginia. Double double, 16 and 10, 10 assists that is. So a lot of guys can come in and give this team a boost. Yes, a lot of flexibility off that bench. And we talked about the front court where they have a lot of depth and size. Nicholas gives them an opportunity. He can play either the one or the two position at the guard spot. So that makes Dixon very flexible as well. Blake sitting over there, going to get a nice rest, not, not be in any foul trouble. And again, Jason Williams on the bench. So Duke not able to use the man that's really put them on the offensive thrust in this tournament very well here in the first half. And again, the lead is doubled. Six minutes to go in a half. As I said before, Maryland couldn't have had a better opponent for them in the Final Four, a team that has a great reputation, but a team that they have played well all year long and think they can beat. Battier, baseliner. Oh, look at Doug Levy. Six foot nine inch guard. He was way up there. He really was. 
But you can see the Maryland defensive strategy is to take away all three-point shots, even if it means giving up some penetration. Mouton, get back to him. And he wasn't really looking for it. Morris had a good idea. Duhon pull off. Yeah, but do you see where the hand was? Right on his shot. Here Four comes against Maryland. one. Morris blocked by Fannier. Charge called against Maryland. We will see the missed shot right here. And Dunleavy way above the rim and does a great job not putting his ball, his hand in the cylinder. Terrific job on his part. <laughs> He was above that rim. What, Jim, would you say? A foot and a half? He was right above the, the window. Right on it, anyway. And here we have again Jason Williams sitting. Which reminds me a little bit. In 1981, Bob Knight sat Isaiah Thomas when a guy by the name of Ethan Martin was taking care of him in the first half of the Dallas Indiana game. But it didn't take Isaiah much time to get started in the championship game against North Carolina. Boozer with the bucket for the Blue Devils. And James whistled for that one. Nate James had the right idea. We've seen a lot of dangerous cross-court passing out front by teams in both games today. Blake back on the floor. How about his action? He has been outstanding. There was that bounce pass that only works when you got a big man that can catch the ball like that. That was a tough ball to catch. Another one inside. There's Dixon moving well without the ball. There's that jumper that Blake hit after he'd been hit in the ear. Young man from Miami having a terrific game as usual against Duke. Martisich and Holden come back as a pair again for Baxter and Morris. You know, we talked about the Williams-Blake matchup. Even in the game where Williams went crazy and brought Duke with eight points when they were down by 10 with a minute to go, came back with those eight points in 14 seconds, Blake had fouled out of that game, Jim, and up to that point, Jason Williams had 11 points and 10 turnovers. So I realized Duke won that game, and Williams had the big stats when it was all over. But when Blake was on the floor, Williams was in trouble. He has forced some ugly numbers in that department. He sure has. Against Blake and the Williams matchup all season. And Duke players are going to have to make the adjustment that they're not going to get the threes. They've got to penetrate and kick out. And there is nice move by James, very aggressive to the hole. The penetration will definitely be there. You can see what Maryland has decided to do. Duke will have to adjust. Dixon short on the three. It's James again. With Gary Williams, you got to get a little nervous right now because Duke is a kind of team can make a great run. Mouton prevented that bucket inside. Tie up, arrow, Duke. Dunleavy wanted a timeout. Well, he gets it. He had the arrow anyway. One official again. First indicated. High up, but instead, time out. Duke ball when we come back. With up to 100,000. Jim Nance, Billy Packer back here at the Final Four. Arizona in the title game with its 19-point win over Michigan State. Second time in NCAA history, two teams from the ACC in the Final Four. We mentioned that earlier, Virginia, Carolina, back in 81. But it's actually the first time two ACC teams have met in the tournament at any stage since 83 in Ralph Sampson's final wow. college game. Against, against uh, Jerry Wittenberg in NC State. And finally, Shane Battier says, I had an open look from three. One of those patented runs. You get a feel for Duke coming right here. And they'd like, and if you're Mike Krzyzewski, you'd like to have it take place before the half. You know there's one coming. I mean, there's just too much of a track record in the first three games for the not to be. That was not a good shot by Dixon. Nobody under, not expecting it. Duhan, nice, but taken away by Martisich. And the Turks run it out. Hold it. Oh, Battier got a piece of that ball. Back to Dixon off the glass. Beautiful gliding shot right there. And one of the things that Duhan will have to learn is you can throw passes inside the Boozer who has decent hands, but Sanders cannot catch that ball on the move. So he makes a good pass, but to the wrong person. And you see what Dunleavy just did the same thing there. Casey, you're not the recipient of that kind of pass. Battier is, and he delivers. There's the difference. You've got to take in consideration who's the receiver if you're a good passer. Little turnaround right here for Duke University. A 22-point lead at one time, trimmed to 13. 
Blake past Duhan to the corner. Holden. Charge. Battier with a tremendous recovery on that play. He is so intelligent as a basketball player. I don't think there's ever been anyone better at college basketball. And draw the charge. He's done it again. Timeout on the floor. Gary Williams was a three-year starting point guard at Maryland. Snuck into his first Final Four when he was played at Coldfield House back in 1966. Saw a pretty good game. Yes, he did. Game. Texas Western over Kentucky. Brought back to his alma mater by then athletic director Lou Perkins to revive the program that was on life support. And a hold, a call against the Terps. Jim, I really wondered why Gary Williams came out of that timeout without getting his starters on the floor with 2.45 to go. You have got a whole halftime to get yourself rested. And I, I, I thought he was really taking a chance, but immediately he gets Morris and Baxter back in there because you don't want this run to take place by Duke University. And Holden, a very valuable scorer, gets his third foul here in the first half. One and one for Battier. First to ever be so honored as the Naismith High School and College Player of the Year and the 10th Duke player ever to have his jersey retired. But he did have his senior day, the final home game of his career, spoiled by Maryland. February the 27th, the Turks won at Cameron the second straight year. 16 to 5 Duke run. Nice reverse dribble by Dixon, but he's caught in the corner and nobody's coming to help him out. And there are those great hands by Baxter. Boy, did he shuffle the feet? Some people thought he had. Oh, Duhan has to be careful. It's going against him. Coming up, singular at the half. Greg Clark and Bill will have the first half analysis. And they'll be joined on the set by Lute Olson, whose Wildcats will compete for the championship Monday night. All coming up on singular at the half. And, and Jim, there you see Lou Olson, terrific job in the first game. Jim, that play that we just saw there is so amazing when you've got a big guy that can catch a ball. It seems like such an easy, fundamental thing to do. But instead of it being a turnover to a guy who can't catch the ball, it turns out to be a Maryland opportunity to get two off the foul line. Big, big difference. And Baxter hits two. He turned it as a desperate situation when they played Stanford in the West Final to get to the Final Four. He said, we were desperate. And there's Jason Williams actually turned that ball over, got lucky, cheap foul called. Williams really out of sync in this first half. We have seen him play better than anybody in the NCAA tournament coming into the Final Four. He hasn't had much going right in this first half, however. Second on Morris and Williams look at his point totals didn't have to play many minutes against Monmouth back to back 30 point games Missouri UCLA first Duke player to do that in the NCAA since Jeff Mullins and in 28 against USC and he had that 19 points run in a row I'm not talking about as a Duke know, team we're talking incredible. about as Jason Williams individually put on quite a show. Probably the only time he bettered that all year is those eight points in 14 seconds against Maryland. As soon as Blake fell out of the game in round one of what is now round four of the Maryland Duke series on the season. Good solid rebound by Morris against Battier there. A tug on, a, on the ear by Blake. Looking for maybe a little pick and roll action for Morris. He's got a small man on him, takes advantage. Blake, yeah. shuffle the feet before he... Uh, Put it on the floor. Boy, Maryland had exactly what they wanted that time. Big on little because of the pick and roll situation, and Morris doesn't get a chance to take advantage. Wilcox from the state of North Carolina, from Raleigh, 6'10 freshman, is going to be a good one. He really is, and it shows again the depth that this team has in the front court. 11 turnovers for the Terrapins. Yet they lead by 12. Inside A big man who can catch. Timeout, Maryland. Amazing how this very subtle comeback taking place by Duke University. Not one of their patented runs, but solid. The comeback fueled by, among others, Carlos Boozer. Down to 10. Obviously, Lauren Woods doing a little scouting. He knows all about ACC ball. And this man right here, Eugene Edgerson, knows a little thing about playing in Monday night championship games. Edgerson 
a part of that uh, title team for sure back in 97. Baxter. Morris may have gotten away with one over the back. It would have been his third. Nate James coming up with some solid performance here in the last four or five minutes. Again, they're attacking that jump shot. Too high. High at the three and tried to step in for the two. Delayed call. This first half, Jim, I've got to say, is very poorly officiated for both teams. Gary Williams can't believe it, neither can Baxter. Baxter's second. The officials are really out of sync in this ballgame. Duhan goes in. Baxter makes a little touch. The foul is called late after Fifth Baxter team. actually had the rebound. But he did put his hands on him that well, time. he did. So two for Duhan, who really starred in that East final, hitting some huge threes in the second half to shake off USC. A great run by Henry Bibby and the Trojans. Uh, a, a regional final, I might add, that Shane Battier predicted selection night. Said, we're going to see, he told his teammates, USC in that uh, final eight. And he also told the Battier, Juan Dixon in Atlanta after that game against Maryland, we'll see you in Minneapolis. Blake putting it out in front of Duhon. Duhon almost getting a piece of that ball a couple times. Nice crossover dribble, but a bad shot. But Baxter retrieves. Boozer doing a good job in there. Williams just doesn't seem confident to be able to go by Blake. Blake doesn't have the quickest feet, but he just stays in front of him all the time. It's not the same player from the first four games of this a, tournament. It is really amazing how he can look him right in the gut. Oh, there's a crossover. Finally, but nothing there. Boozer with those strong hands. And a call on Morris. It'll be his third. It is amazing how this game is getting away from Maryland. They can't get anything structured. They've gotten out of their offense, taking some quick shots, and they're not turning that ball over the way they were earlier. Maryland led at the seven-minute mark, 39 to 17. Carlos Boozer, when he got injured against Maryland, he had 16 points, seven rebounds, and Duke was in the lead in that game. But when he went down with that foot injury, Maryland took the game and just took it over in Carmichael. There's Williams sitting down again. And Morris going out with his three fouls. So Wilcox and Martisic in for Maryland. Last 30 seconds. Good move by Mike Krzyzewski, not wanting Jason Williams to pick up a cheap foul. Loser 0 for 2, but James has made some significant plays until that pass. The ACC's number one man in steals. Dixon picks it off. They can take the final shot. He knows it. Very steady. Uh, James cannot stay with Dixon quickness-wise, and Dixon knows that. He wants a clear out. Makes his move. No, he'll take the three. Whoa! What a shot. What a huge turnaround. Duke would have had the last shot with an opportunity to close into the lead. Dixon, the leader he is, handles it. Boy, he backed James off. He's too quick for James, can go around him, and pulls up with a huge three. What did they do yesterday during their practice here? Shot they stood out as a team and shot from mid-court. Let's go over to Armand Kateo. Thanks, Jim. Gary, big start by you, fast finish by Duke. How do you turn it around? Well, we're up 11. We don't have to turn it around. We have to keep playing. To be up 11 at halftime against a team like Duke is a great half. All right. Thanks, Thanks Coach. The 49 points by Maryland, the most allowed in the first half this season by the Blue Devils. Greg Clark and Bill in just a moment. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Men's National Semifinal Game is sponsored by Volvo, DirecTV, Singular, and by United Airlines. We are midway through Maryland Duke in Minneapolis. Our score at halftime, Maryland 49 and Duke 38. And these aerial views are courtesy of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. Goodyear providing aerial coverage of the world sporting events for nearly 40 years. Welcome to Singular at the half, everyone. I'm Greg Gumbel, along with Clark Kellogg and Bill Walton in a game that is not the best officiated game that we've seen all season long. Uh, however, we will move on. In the Don't first go half, out on a limb there, Greg. No, I won't. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about what was wrong with the Duke uh, Blue Devils 
doubles in the first half. Well, I think a lot of it you have to attribute to the Maryland defense, Greg. They really didn't allow Duke to get good, clean looks at the three. Their pressure was excellent. They got out and were aggressive and turned some early turnovers into points. I thought Maryland executed their game plan quite well for the first 13 minutes of that first half. How about the Terps, Bill? Well, Duke, first of all, they were awful. They were very tentative. They couldn't shoot, rebound, or defend. Other than that, they were just fine. But for Maryland, Steve Blake was absolutely terrific. He was able to get into the lane there. Nobody could shut him down. I don't know where Jason Williams and Duhon's defense was. He was able to pick him apart. And on the offensive glass, Maryland was just pounding him time and time again. Uh, poor defensive rotation, poor defensive strategy right now for Duke. And yet, with all that, they're right in it. And it's Maryland in foul trouble. You got the big guys, Baxter, Morris, and Holden across the front line in foul trouble. Maryland's 11 turnovers have really killed them. All right, guys, uh, these two teams are fighting to move on to Monday night's title game against the Arizona Wildcats. Arizona knocked off the defending champion Michigan State Spartans in game one, 80 to 61. Maryland's Mike, Michael Wright misses the shot, grabs his own rebound, and scores the bucket. Arizona's up 11. But I thought it was the defense of the Wildcats that really turned this in the second half. Very aggressive Richard Jefferson jumping in the passing lane, coming up with the steal. And then Jefferson again from behind the three-point line, knocking down a triple. And Michigan State, Zach Randolph with the basket and the foul as they tried to come back. However, watch Jason Gardner with the steal, the layup, and the foul. And Arizona was on its way, 80 to 61 at game's end. Coach Lou Olson and Coach Izzo embracing. And we are joined now by Lou Olson, the head coach of the Arizona Wildcats, who are headed to Monday night's final at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Congratulations to you, Coach. Uh, are they right? Was it defense that did it for you tonight? Well, I don't think there was any doubt about it. Uh, it was sort of interesting in the media conference, though, said, you guys play defense like that all the time? <laughs> I said, why don't you look at the stats? You know, the teams have shot under 40 percent on on us for the year. So we're a very good defensive team. We have good quickness and a real key for us were the steals. We got 12 steals and most of those were converted into into baskets. I thought that was uh, the, probably the biggest single difference in the game. Coach, how do you package that effort? How do you package and duplicate that emotional performance out there, the best of the year for the Wildcats? Well, our guys will be ready to play because their, their focus has been on Monday night all year long. So you didn't see any any real celebration or anything else. They just uh, uh, they wanted to play Monday and I think uh, I think they'll be ready Monday. What about the turnaround for Michael Wright in the second half and then Lauren Woods over the last six weeks of the season. Yeah well Lauren has become much more aggressive and that's that's been the key uh, with Michael Wright you know he had zero at the half so we came out and ran a couple specials this, to start the second half. And I think we ran off like 15 straight uh, points or 25 to 5 it ended up and and uh, that was where the, the game was turned around was uh, coming out of the locker room. Going how serious into, is it? Excuse me, Bill. I'm sorry. <laughs> going into that second half, were you pleased with how things had gone in the first half for your team? Yeah, I thought I thought we were fine. The, the, the key thing when you're playing Michigan State is you've got to make sure that you have as many possessions as they have. And as it turned out over the 40 minutes, they had one more possession than we had. And I told our guys, we're a better shooting team than, than they are. We just can't give them 10 or 15 more possessions than what we have. And they outboarded us, but they had a lot more misses to board also. Uh, and, and the difference in steals and turnovers really made the difference, I thought. How about the injury to Gilbert Arenas? Well, uh, you know, he's going to be very sore, but he's, he's fine. They took him in the locker room, and, and the x-rays were negative. So the big thing is going to be the soreness. But... Uh, He'll, he'll be fine. Coach, we thank you for joining us. Congratulations to you. We look forward to seeing you here Monday night. Thanks a lot, Greg. You bet. Thank you. We thank you for watching Singular at the half. Who is it who will meet Lou Olson's Wildcats in the title game on Monday evening? The Terps or the Blue Devils? Jim and Billy are back with the second half after this. CBA Sports presents Singular at the half. Sponsored by Singular. The wireless company that believes in the value of self-expression. Maryland 49, Duke 38 at halftime. Nortel Networks presents the Virtual Playbook. Here's something that we saw Blake do so well in this first half. Cut to the inside. Dixon does a terrific job getting loose. And Duke does not recover. Battier tries to help out. But James gets lost. Dixon scores on the inside. Here we'll see. Blake penetrates. Battier does a good job. 
but Nate James gets caught. Dixon puts him behind that screen. The feed goes inside. Dixon scores just as he did to end the half. Dixon with 16, and the Terrapins lead by 11. It's exclusive coverage of the NCAA Men's National Semi-Final Game is sponsored by Budweiser, American Express, Agilent Technologies, and by Chevy Trucks. How has the game unfolded, Billy, with your pregame thoughts? Well, Baxter doing exactly what we expected inside. Just a solid game. He does have two fouls on him, so he's got to be worried. He's got to be very careful inside. He has been the factor. Seven points, five rebounds, very solid, good hands. The good, bad, and the ugly. Morris has done a fine job in there. He's got five rebounds, three points. Nothing ugly about that at all. Almost complete. Shane Battier has been taken off the three-point line. Ten points, solid job, but not what we expected. And Isaiah in blue, it has been Williams, one for seven, is blue, not yeah, Isaiah. I was say, is that what you meant? No, I didn't <laughs> mean that one. And well, that is probably the difference in this game, to be quite honest. With you. Duke, before tonight's largest halftime deficit of the season was nine against Maryland. Game one, Devils came back to win it. How about this? Duke using Williams. Battier over the back, Morris. Did you see right what? Right away with his... Fourth. Well, that is a huge foul, and Gary Williams now is going to have to go to that bench a lot earlier than he wanted to. But interesting what Mike Krzyzewski did there, Jim. He took the ball out of Jason Williams' hands, had him being the guard that was moving without the ball, trying to get Blake away from him. We'll see if he continues to do that in a half. He had Dunleavy out handling the ball with Duhon. So a big moment, though, in the first 14 seconds of the second half, and Morris departs. Wilcox replaces him. I'm surprised that Wilcox is the replacement right here. We got Holden on yeah. the bench with three. Yeah, but I thought that it might be Martisic with the with his experience, or maybe Miller. So the freshman goes in there, Wilcox, with Battier on it. Duhan and a tie up the Jump arrow, ball. Maryland. Let's go over to Bonnie Bernstein. I'm Duke was just said that might be the emotional locker room he's seen in the Blue Devils all year. He said the first 12 minutes we didn't play Duke basketball. Then we started getting aggressive and pressuring and could close the gap. Standing outside the locker room, I can tell you there was an awful lot of yelling and screaming about finding your heart at a critical time in Duke's season. And it went on for, I might add, about two minutes longer than Maryland's locker room visit. Devils were late getting out here compared to the Terps. Jason Williams moving no speed on defense. Inside open. Bhutan, oh, and it rolls off the rim to the line for a pair. Good look inside by Wilcox. You're talking about a freshman finding an open man when he's handling the ball in an area where he's really not that comfortable. Duhan second, and Mouton will shoot two. Really good first half by Mouton. Three for five, six points, five rebounds. Solid. He had a solid first game of the tournament, too really starred against George Mason when some of the other notables had an off game, including Baxter, who only had two points. Mouton right. had 22. He had nine for nine for the foul line, which was an NCAA record for uh, Maryland. Jason Williams crossover dribble, trying to get something started. Look at how they're taking away that three-point shot, just rushing right at the Duke players. Battier, though, he has an open look, and he nails it. Good movement that time by Duke University to set something up from the outside. Inside, Baxter, and they don't let him get the easy two. Pretty good foul by Sanders, who has fouls to give. Duke University probably going with Sanders as long as they can, but get Boozer back in there. Now, Maryland surprisingly with their deep front line in some foul trouble, particularly with key guys. We see Morris already out of this game to sit down. Morris with four. Holden with three. Baxter will shoot another free throw. A Maryland team that handed both Duke and Stanford their largest losses of the season. You talk about Duke and Stanford, they held the number one ranking collectively 12 of the 18 weeks. They both fell to the Terrapins and their biggest losses of the year to this team that now leads by nine. Second half, Williams. And creating 
He, there's another where, foul here. Jim, there's where Williams really has the advantage, well, even good. against guards that are good defenders, as Blake has been against him. He is so strong in his upper body, and he talks about how he was so disappointed in that loss against Florida last year that he spent the summer bulking up, getting stronger, and now he really overpowers people when he takes them inside. It's the first on Blake, and one more for Williams. Gets the foul, the drop. Had a stretch this year where he missed 16 straight free throws. That's, That's just that is unimaginable. Isn't it? You see the way he fires threes when he starts clicking with players draped all over him. How in the world could that happen? Two Number two here. Well, he makes 46% of threes <laughs> and yeah. with nobody. You know, with guys all over him and from the foul line, missed 16 straight with nobody guarding. That may be the way to defend him. Duke shaved it to seven. Devils just keep chipping away after being down 22 in the first half. Adia keeping an eye alert for Baxter. Nice Baxter shot. Set back out of there. Williams got Duhon on a wing. This could bring it to four. You got it. I want to give Battier so much credit. He anticipated exactly what Baxter was going to do. That's why he's been the best defender in college basketball for three straight years. It is following the script of the first three epic matchups. The Devils are back in it. With givers back to a program, too, when you talk about Grand Hill. Absolutely. A million dollar endowment. Well, we remember, was it right not here, Jim, that incredible catch against that, Kansas? That, that, that was Indianapolis. That was oh, the that was first one. That was the first That's one. That's when right. he was a freshman, just the start of the game on a You're right. feed from Hurley. And Wilcox, yeah, he had to kind of find himself under the cylinder there. To the freshman from Maryland. Big match mistake there for Duke. Man to man out of bounds. Williams send it back out of there. Battier collision with Blake. They'll call it on Blake. His second. Blake cannot afford any cheap fouls. Having to guard Williams out there. He needs to stay on the floor. He knows he has no chance to get this one. Not a good play by Blake there. And if you're Maryland, you want to keep Duke off that foul line the best you can. And we saw, as was the case for Granville, Southern California, you do not want to go ahead and pick up cheap fouls. You're playing in the backcourt to get Duke. What hands. Fingertip catch by Battier. Leans in, and he did exactly what he wanted him to do. He got the freshman to foul him on a three-point attempt. There's, there's the senior taking the young man to school. And again, I'm really surprised that the freshman is in the game right now. Look at this lineup right here. But we said almost complete at the top of the show, Jim. One thing missing from that list. Only one thing. A national championship ring. Two wins to do it, and two victories would tie him with Wayne Turner of Kentucky as the winningest college basketball player of all time. He's got 129 career wins. It's an all-time ACC record. Turner, who, by the way, now is the starting point guard for the Globetrotters, who had a 1,200-plus game win streak snap this year to Michigan State. All right, the Devils again within four, under 18 to play. Maryland, in both of the losses to Duke this year, blew second-half double-digit leads. Pretty good back screen by Mouton. Doesn't work. Blake, though, very, very savvy with that one. What Blake is recognizing is Duhon is trying to steal it every time he uses the crossover dribble. James, he feeds from the corner, but not here. Sanders. Nice battles. Too strong, and Baxter clears. Just not strong enough to fish, finish inside with all those powerful bodies. But a guy is coming from that bench right now who is strong enough. Boozer is going to be coming into the game. Solid screen up here, trying to get the hedge move. Dixon. Run of the rim just barely grazed it. Loose ball, Mouton. Sanders reached for the ball instead of moving his feet to get that rebound, and it really cost Duke. Back up to eight, Duhan. One Louisiana player at one end, Mouton, and then Duhan from Slidell, Louisiana, at the other. Two high school players of the year from their respective states. Inside, doubled up Baxter. Battier made the play. 
Battier is anticipating exactly what Baxter is going to do. And what Baxter has to read there is an immediate pass when he catches it in the low post. For Tuesday, CBS illusionist David Copperfield, his greatest challenge ever. He'll be inside of a tornado of fire. It's a live, spectacular new special, Copperfield. Tornado of fire Tuesday on CBS. Boozer is back. Holden comes in, and only because of that foul trouble, Jim, in my estimation, did Gary Williams not go with Holden first when Morris got into foul trouble. So he stole some minutes with Wilcox. Inside play. You were calling for it, Billy, and it's Boozer delivering. You said that's what they're going to have to go to in this half. That's right. They go down inside with a power game, so they stole some minutes with Sanders. Both coaches here looking for a game that they think is going down the wire and trying to save as much as they can on that bench. Boy, Baxter's got to realize Boozer's trying to help out a lot. Baxter can get open underneath the basket. Five on the shot clock. Holden, great shot touch. Mouton, he has had a very active game. It's going to be a charge against Mouton of Maryland. Nice job by Jason Williams. Realizing he had a man against him that was bigger, he just held his ground. Second on Mouton. There's Jason Williams holding his ground with his feet. Nice job. Back inside Minneapolis's Metrodome, Jim Nance, Billy Packer with the singular si sky cam. And no question, really, Billy, before today, the highest profile program never to be in a Final Four. Maryland leading over Duke. James trying to slice it to one. Nice rebound by Dixon over Duhon. Dixon speeds past Boozer, gets bumped from behind. It looked like he was passing. Will they say he was in the act of shooting? No, I think he was passing the ball. I think the official's all over that. He gets hit from behind, but he was making the pass. He's trying to work it, but the official doesn't get the call. He is the leading free throw shooter in the ACC. You mentioned earlier, tops in the league in steals, too. Second one on Boozer. There's that man-to-man -man out of bounds situation, and that time, I mean, his own out of bounds, and do a lot better. And retracted by Battier. Again, stepping up defensively. Williams, stutter step move under the basket, gets the spin. There's Jason Williams. So tough when he uses that hesitation dribble. Borders on a carry, gets by with it. His first field goal in exactly 20 minutes on the game clock. He was one for nine up to that point. Duke only three for, now three for 17 from three. Here he goes, turning that corner. Slides underneath, uses the rim, beautiful. Blake, the other point guard answers. What Duhon is trying to do, Jim, is steal the ball from Blake too much instead of what Blake is doing to Williams, which is keeping his body and feet right squared up and in front of him. Duhon's got to play more solidly or Blake will eat him up. Kick out, kick out. Yep, Duhon over Dixon. And stepping in is Williams to slam it home. Just as we saw Sanders stand and reach for the ball, that's what happened to two Maryland players on that possession. You have got to go get to it. Miller coming in. Now see if Duhon will now start to play more solidly. He's always reaching for the ball, and that's getting him in trouble. Holden, Dixon, challenges the big bodies, no whistle. Baxter. Duke. How about that block, Jim? Two hands on the ball. Great timing by Battier. He is a brilliant defender. This is a sensational defensive play. All ball with two hands. Right hand was in there a little bit, but beautiful well, if, with the left. If the hand is on the ball, the hand and the ball are one and the same, Jim. Three blocks for Battier. Not until tomorrow will they announce the National Defensive Player of the Year. And if he's not the man, there's still time to maybe change that vote. How can they not? Third straight year it'll be for Battier, no doubt. Williams, Williams and Baxter rejects. Good hands. Williams saves it, and it's Duke Ball. He threw it off Miller's body. Smart play by Jason because he knew if he threw the ball back out on the court, it would be like a pass we saw Michigan State doing all day, cross court in the back court, which would lead to an easy basket. Only seven on the shot clock. No reset here. Solid screen by Boozer for Jason Williams. 
Blake understands that. He doesn't want Jason to get the ball. From 22 down to tie the game, no. Baxter pulls it away for the Terrapins. They tried to use Williams as a decoy on that play. Holden, over Battier, not close. Miller, heads up <laughs> off James. Well, Miller just saw what it felt like for Jason Williams to do it on the other end of the floor. Don Levy and Sanders back for Duke. Don Levy and Sanders. And you got to figure, trying to keep Boozer fresh. You know, Williams is coming out of this game a lot. You wonder if maybe he's a little under the weather. This is not like Mike to be putting him down that much. He has played some games where he'll play up in a 40-minute stop. Dixon traveling? Yes. Martisic in for Maryland. The senior, again, Played more games than any Terrapin ever, 136. If uh, Maryland wins today, it would be his 100th victory. No one's had more wins in that school's uh, very big basketball history, although that history never included a Final Four before today. Battier, tough shot, would have given him the lead, and Blake comes out with it quickly. Dixon's open. Martisic taps it in, back up to four. That's where I thought Gary Williams would go when he had to go with Morris on that bench. Let a senior who looked like he was pretty aggressive in the first half get some playing time. He went with Wilcox, and it didn't cost him too much. You know, I mentioned back to Williams again. He played 39 minutes against Missouri, 37 against Southern California. He's been sitting down a lot in this game. And he's about to check back in again. Oh! Good play by Duhon. Nobody had his man in the air. That shot went up, not worried about making it, but drawing the foul. And it goes for him anyway. He's got Blake in the air. That's why I said earlier, Blake cannot afford to get any cheap fouls because he has such responsibility defensively against the likes of Duhon and Williams. That's just like Blake's last foul, too, except that one wasn't any act of shooting. He just comes colliding down with the Blue Devil, and Duhon can bring it back to one. You get the feeling these two teams could play for a month of Sundays, <laughs> and it would still be a close game no matter who gets a good run. A lot of mutual respect, but there's it's amazing. They've scouted each other and played against each other so much that they know exactly what the tendencies are. Williams in for Duhan. Nicholas handling the ball for Maryland. is like Juan Dixon said this week, we bring out the best in each other. Here he is. Dixon had that huge first half. Nicholas. Martisic, his second basket is coming back in. Got the big body. We're talking about a guy with four majors. Great grades. And playing a fine basketball game. Dixon on the reach. And his second, it's going to be a one and one for Jason Williams. Jim Jason is in this second half changing his game somewhat taking the ball right all the way to the basket now trying to get on that foul line he realizes they're trying to take away his outside jump shot so he's penetrating to the hoop still having trouble with the foul shots however and when you think of this Duke team they broke the national record this year, 391 threes, breaking that Arkansas record of 365 way back in 95. But Maryland has taken them away from the three-point line today. They've got the under 12 timeout. Is there any doubt? Maryland and Duke are coming down to the wire again. Two-point game, second half. But I'm going to the war. Our Chevy truck's eye vision, Billy. Well, here we see the eye on Shane Battier. You can watch him coming all the way across the lane to come up with an incredible block. Time after time, he has really taken away points that Maryland thought they already had on the scoreboard, Jim, with great defensive play. Here's a double team for the first time by Duke in the backcourt. Tough pass pulled down by Holden, and they get it across with two seconds to spare. Duke is on a 45-25 stretch since being down 22 in the first half. This is about the longest time period of a comeback though I've seen. Good job by Dickens. On the drive, back up to four. Every time Duke seems to get it 
down to a point where they can take the lead. Somebody from Maryland comes back and does a good job. Now here Maryland for the first time going zone. Williams, player in his face, front of the rim. And they are taking away his three-point shot the whole game. Dixon doesn't mind taking it to the hoop. Blocked by Dunleavy. Dixon back up with it. And Battier over to Boozer. Jason does not have the numbers. Outside, James has the shot. Good block out by Martisic. He took Boozer right away. Duke having all kinds of problems from three. This year against Maryland, they took 97 threes prior to this time, made 32 of them. But today, they can't find the mark because Maryland's playing them tight at the three-point line. And there was a foul there on James. Before the shot, test your knowledge of tournament trivia and participate in live polls through this interactive telecast available on Ultimate TV. I'll tell you how far off Duke is with its threes. Four of 20 for the game. Meanwhile, at the other end, Three by one, Dixon. Jim, what Duke can do to get some three-point shots, now that's not a good one either. What they can do to get three-point shots is to penetrate, force the defense to play them inside, and then kick out. What they're trying to do is to get it with just rotation passes, or like we saw Duhan do there, coming off the dribble right down court with nobody inside. Bad play by the freshman. Third on Boozer. Dixon's shot a moment ago, his first points of the second half. Good switch by Battier. Nicholas should go get the ball back. He's got Battier on him. Dixon wants it, has the feeling. Not this time. Holden gets it back to him, though. This is the one he just hit. And Battier with the two hands secures it. Nice job by Nicholas realizing that his team was not in good defensive position, got back so the two couldn't get the numbers on the fast break. And there they are in the 1 2 2 zone. Martisic and Holden down inside. Battier's three. Yes. And Martisic not quick enough and did not anticipate quick enough that Battier's out on the side. It's amazing how that Maryland can play the three much better from their man to man. Battier just went out and extended the zone. Nicholas, second oh. time. Over the back. Holden the fourth. The fourth on Holden. Look at Battier leading his team down the floor running, trying to show Maryland that we've got more left in our tank than you do yours. Good leadership there. It'll be a one and one at the other end. They're playing for the right to take on Arizona Monday night in Minneapolis for the national championship. 80 to 61 victory today over Michigan State. Jim, that's like teams in football in that fourth quarter run down to the other end and say, you know what? We've got the gas, you don't have it. Absolute mind game. Yes, it is. And missing the front end of it, Battier. Jason Williams anticipating the pass. Nicholas bounces it in. And going to the line will be Holden. Boy, Holden has such great hands on the inside. He is going to be some player for Maryland. One of those kind of guys, not heavily recruited. Some people thought in high school he was too soft to play in a league like the ACC. But he's working on his game. And you can really anticipate this guy being a major factor in college basketball. From the Jersey Shore, from Red Bank Regional High School, sophomore Taj Holden will shoot two. Well, this young man, Jim, coming into the Final Four was 20 for 31, 65% in his last seven games. So it shows you the lift that Maryland got off the bench from him. Hit big threes against Stanford, three of them, as yep. they took out the one seed in the West in that regional final. 0 for 2 here, and Sanders tips it over to Battier. Four-point deficit for Duke. And they stay in the zone. One, two, two with Miller out on top. Jason Williams has got to penetrate with the dribble and get it inside and then kick out. What's it going to be? It's a charge on Battier, his second. I'm really surprised that Duke has not recognized what's available in this game. There's Battier on the drive, but he's got to look to pass out. But it's too late. Now look at Holden step in there with sure. four fouls and draw. But he knows this, Jim. He's got men on the bench. Morris has been out for a long time. 
Wilcox back there. You can see Gary Williams trying to save as many minutes as he can. Butler comes back with Morris to Perry. set him in a mark. There's that turnover. And B Battier's charge, by the way, goes in the books as a turnover, which is the first turnover of the half for the Blue Devils, who certainly made a lot of miscues early in this game. But uh, four straight possessions, but certainly uh, simmered down ever since. Only six for the game. Williams. Try to create an extra arch on that ball to get it over the top. Duhon steps in, Maryland ball. Again, Duke University throwing the ball around on the perimeter instead of getting penetration inside with kickouts to get much better looks from three. So Dixon returns. I'm wondering when Morris is going to come back in this ball game, Jim, for Maryland to get more experience on the floor. Smart play by Dixon. He's got Dunleavy. He's quicker than Dunleavy and wants to take him. And a switch. He's got Battier on him now. Spin move on him. Right into the hands of Sanders. Nowhere to go. Shows you the versatility of Battier defensively. Taking on a guard. It's that quick. Battier wide wow. out there. As long as you'll see. That, that was a that, Dixon proportions at the end of the first half. That was almost like Maryland was trying at halftime at the end of practice yesterday. Or at half court, rather. Miller not going to get by with that. One point game, and Duhon with the reach. You just get the feeling that Duke is ready to get control of the lead, and every time there's a play that just doesn't quite work out. There's the good penetration kick out. Block with his defense. Another block. Young man with five straight 20-point games in the NCAA tournament. Doing it again today. Actually, six. You go six. back to last year. He's got five straight double-doubles, too. One and one with Miller. And former McDonald's High School All-America. He'll shoot one more. Former South Jersey player of the year. Did you even recognize basketball, by the way, the other night in that McDonald's All-America game, Billy? What was that? I was watching. Well, it wasn't the sport that's normally played in that arena, I can tell you that. that. Ed Cameron. Battier trying to bring back the Devils. Maryland trying to hold them off. It's been a wild one, as expected here, the national semifinals. Jim Nance and Billy Packer with you. and. Just when it seems like Duke might be ready to take the lead, Maryland's able to push it back up to six or seven. But it's three right now, under eight minutes to play. Jim, the key for Duke University, I think, if they're going to make this comeback, they're only six for 24 from three. And the reason for it is Maryland's design defensively is to take away the three-point shot for Duke. Duke has got to figure out ways to get back into the three-point game. They've taken the three away from Williams, that's for sure. He's 0 for 7. Boozer sealing inside. Battier's hit a couple, though, in recent trips. Inside, Boozer slams it home. Down to one. And there's the time, Billy. There's the difference with Boozer on the inside, that low post presence. Sanders can't make that play. Three different times they've cut it to one. From 22 to one. Miller guns a three. Don't like the shot, but I like that rebound. Baxter inside and a reach in. We just saw the difference between having bulky guys that can catch the ball. Just a great rebound by Baxter inside. You wonder what Miller's doing taking that shot. And here is Baxter, who was the outstanding player in the West Regional against big centers. I mean, the Collins brothers couldn't handle it. In the 71 points, that's with two points in the George Mason game. Right, and breaks a new Maryland record for NCAA tournament play, beating the great John Lucas's seven. Morris comes back with his four fouls, but significant moment there. Uh, just uh, on that foul, it was the fourth on Boozer, who stays in. Well, remember, Boozer did not play at all in the ACC tournament game, which Duke won by two against Maryland. A little full court pressure. And with Morris back in, they go man to man. And there, Williams gets Duke the lead, 73-72, with his first three of the game.
Very important half court set now for Duke University. Battier battles for a rebound. It was Nicholas in there trying to keep it alive. The arrow belongs Jump to Maryland. Away. Great timing by Battier. Sunday on CBS, 60 minutes, touched by an angel, then Mark Harmon and Rachel Ward in the movie and never let her go. How will Maryland now handle this with First thing I'd do is go inside to Baxter and get Boozer out of the game if possible with his fifth foul. Because Boozer gives Duke University something they don't have oh. that. Oh, inbounds oh. pass to Morris. Second time today against it. In an inbound situation, Maryland scores. And there again, Blake staying in front of Williams. Williams was still able to weave his way to regain the lead. Again, let's see if they'll go ahead and make Boozer play Baxter inside. Blake wanted the lob, but a good job by Duhon getting back to cut that off. Blake, back to the corner. Miller, open look. Baxter again on the offensive glass. Finally, Boozer clears. No numbers. Doesn't even be smart to pull this back out. Charge. What is he thinking? Has no place to go. Mike Krzyzewski can't believe it either. No numbers for Duke. If you want possession, you've got a one-point lead. Bring that ball back out. The son of a coach making a mistake there. And he heads to the bench along with Boozer. Nate James back on the floor. Casey Sanders. Morris, back and forth we go. Maryland with the lead with five and a half to play. And there goes to show you that a mental mistake can hurt as much as a physical. Duke gives up an opportunity to have the ball and the lead with a mistake. Williams again wants it all the way and draws the foul. Goes down hard and what he's doing right now is challenging Blake every time he touches the ball. CBS Sports Line stat of the game. Field goal percentages by half. Look how they've reversed. For complete Final Four coverage, go to cbs.sportsline.com. Two shots for Williams. You talk about field goal shooting percentages in the three games prior to this one. Duke has been outshot by Maryland 49% to 38%. But again, we get back to Duke finding some way to win a game. That one ties it. Crowd very silent right here. Not really believing the way they found Duke so far behind early in this ballgame. And maybe still a little shocked from how well Arizona played in the first game. On the line, Maryland ball. You can look at that clock, and we have essentially a five-minute overtime here <laughs> to decide well, who will play Arizona Monday night. They've done that before as well. First game at Maryland. And that was when Duke made the 10-point comeback with 54 seconds to play when this man with the ball fouled out and Williams took over with an eight-point stretch in 14 seconds. And Morris getting some very good play here. He really since is, coming and back. he's got four fouls on him, Jim, and doing these plays, making some great offensive low post moves. Sanders trying to come over to help out Battier. Good job by Morris. Third on Battier, a senior, and a senior goes to the line. Just two years ago as a sophomore, this man, Morris, was just the fourth Maryland player to make all ACC as a sophomore, joining Tom McMillan. John Lucas, Joe Smith. So many of the old Terrapins have come back to the Final Four here to for a reunion since the program's never experienced it before. Well, Players like McMillan. Well, Jim, you've got to remember that back in the days that they played, only one team from a given conference could go into the NCAA tournament in the incredible game that's still remembered as the best ever played in that league. The 103-100 overtime loss to NC State in 1974, where Maryland was probably, at the worst, the third best team in the country. They could never get over the hump against the NC State, David Thompson, Tommy Burleson club, so they never got into the NCAA tournament. Guys who never got to this point in a push-off on Baxter, who are 
living this experience vicariously today. Names like Mo Howard and Jim O'Brien, Owen Brown. How about Lefty Drizel? Lefty Drizel, <laughs> Lenny Elmore. You know, that game actually changed the concept of the NCAA tournament because after that time, they decided to say it's not fair for only one team to go from a given conference. And so what we see right now are the multiple teams. And surprisingly, Jim, in this tournament, ACC, Big, Big Ten, and Pac-10, the three top conferences winning percentage in the NCAA tournament all here on this floor today. Baxter with his fourth, heads to the bench, holding out also. Marta is in. And here's why I thought that it would have been smart to go to Baxter down and low against Duke. Boozer with four fouls. You want him out of the game if you're Maryland because he is the low post offensive threat for Duke. Boozer hits two and Duke leads by one. They keep going to Morris. And he has it stripped away by the freshman. Duhon. Looking for Williams. Williams now has a situation where Miller's on him, and he knows Miller can't handle him, so he gets a clear out. He just keeps driving. This time, kicks it out. Up past Duhon, able to field it. Please. Still has Miller. Challenges with a three. That's tapped in, but it's Nate Chang. That's the one that's identical to the ACC game against Maryland. I'm really surprised that time that Duke got by with one there because Williams normally would drive on Miller and Gary Williams saying that ball was in the cylinder, no call. He wanted basket interference. Did Watch he have it. a right to argue? No, no, no. Outside. Good touch. Double bonus, two three. Don't look for three. Go to Baxter inside against Boozer. They're not looking for the ball inside. He's got to make himself available. Look out. Oh, what a collision. Ooh. Wow. And their bodies are still tangled. Duhan just wants to lay there for a while. Let's see. And, uh, and Blake is asking him to get his uh, body off him. Boy, both of these guys down. And Wow, that reminded me of Nahara Cleves. Now that one was jaw to back. jaw. This one was up in the air, and you don't have any protection on the way down. Mike Krzyzewski right over. And Blake uh, has walked it off. Duhan still dazed. He looks like he's talking, though, to the trainer. We'll see it right here. Oh, oh back of his that head. Jeez. Snapping of the head is what, uh, what got him. Well, he got an elbow, then he got the head. He got a little bit of both. He really got hit twice here and then snapped it again. And looks like he is talking to the trainer, however. It's aggressive play. Two guys going for the ball. Blake uh, hurt his leg and. Krzyzewski out there helping him to his feet. And what Mike is wanting the referee to do is make sure that they get that floor washed on down. I mean rubbed down because of all the water coming off those jerseys. Taking plenty of time here. The ACC's rookie of the year. Jim, how, can you believe this one? Yeah, he is the first yeah. rookie of the year ever to play from Mike for Krzyzewski. Mike Krzyzewski in the ACC. I mean, you'd say with all of the great <laughs> work, how is that possible? But he is well, the maybe first Maybe it says one. something about the system, too. That, that is That's true. That's what it says. That is true. You know what? We'll see the play right here. See Mike Krzyzewski out there on the floor, by the way, Jim. You know, this is only the second time, and it happened both here uh, on this particular floor. The second time in NCAA history that three of the teams were coached by a guy that already won a national championship. Happened in 92 and then again. Back in 92, you had Bob Knight and you had Krzyzewski. You had Steve Fisher. And Cincinnati with Huggins was the fourth team. Let's go over to Armin Kateyan. Thanks, Jim. The trainer from Maryland was just taking a long, hard look at uh, Blake's right ankle. It's still tender, and he's tested it out. And I'll let you know as soon as we see whether he's going to go back in. Back to you. Oh, this is really a struggle for Duhon. Yes, it is. A real, he can't, he's going to have to be carried off this floor. 
little different than what we saw Gilbert Arenas in that first game today who looked like he was and they're going to take Duhan to the locker room. So we probably will not be seeing him anymore today. We sure hope he's OK. He's played an outstanding game from a certainly from an energy standpoint today. Again double bonus so Nicholas gets another one and uh, Duhan's mother Vivian is going to the locker room. She has moved from Louisiana to Durham North Carolina to be with her son. Brings it back down to one. 335 to go. Duke 80 Maryland 79. After that nasty collision with Steve Blake, Deuce Chris Duhon has left the court. The trainers haven't actually taken him to the locker room. He's just off the court inside the tunnel. They're doing concussion tests on him. And Duhon's mother, Vivian Harper, ran out of the stands, and she's there with him right now, too, Jim. Just as we speak, he just came back, sat down on the bench, and Fannier with Nicholas on his back. Nate James, not blocked out, kept that ball alive for Battier inside. Well, Duhan was backstage for just a moment and then uh, returned right in that report. And certainly uh, far more alert than he was three or four minutes ago. Jim, we mentioned this uh, last week about Battier. In your lifetime as an ACC player, if you play in all the regular season games and your team is lucky enough to go to the ACC championship in the tournament, you can play in 76 games. That's what Battier did in his career. He won in 69 of them. Unbelievable. Especially when you factor in how hard it is to win on the road in that conference. Oh, absolutely. And how hard it is to be in the ACC championship for four years. 25 for Battier in this game. Upping the lead to three again. Taking a long time to get the ball in the low post. Stolen by away by Dunleavy. They're trying to get it the back. Yeah, but taking too much time to get it there because Inside. look at what it's done. Boozer. By not going to Baxter, they're allowing Duke to keep Boozer on the floor with four fouls and being very effective in the low post. Timeout. Maryland. Duke has now attained its largest lead of the game. Remarkable scene here after Chris Duhon could barely walk off the court after that collision with Steve Blake. The trainers just made him run as fast as he could up and down the stairs. There's a good chance he'll be going back in. We'll keep you posted, Jim. Oh, can you imagine that? I don't think he'd be going back in if they st keep the lead right here with 258 to go. Vivian Harper back in her seat. Uh, <laughs> Feeling a whole lot better, too. Oh, don't we all? It's great to see Blake back out on the floor as well. And now Maryland says we're going inside. Uh -oh, and that's just gonna be for Boozer. This was a good move by Maryland, but it came very late. What do they call oh, They're going the other way. That's it's going against Baxter, who can't believe it. Oh, he I falls can't. to the floor in I disbelief. Baxter, that's it for Baxter. He was posted up inside. Can Instead you believe of Boozer this? fouling out, it'll be Baxter. Let's see the play. Wow, that's either a no call. I, I just couldn't see it. I thought these officials really recovered, Jim, as did Duke in the second half from a very poor first half. And they were doing a good job in this second half, but that is a huge call. He has fouled out. He, again, used the word desperate to get to the Final Four after their win against Stanford. Wanting to get their coach there for the first time, their school there for the first time. And devastation was the look he had when he found out it was going the other way. He fell to his knees. Well, I will say this. You'll see Baxter running out of, the, out of there right now. He's really had a great NCAA tournament, set a new record for Maryland in regard to scoring. But I really thought that Maryland went about three minutes too long, Jim, to not go to him down low. Oh, Boozer. Because it allowed this man to stay in the game, and he's been the real force for Duke the last five minutes. Look at those four fouls. They've been four fouls for a long time. Hitting his free throws until that one pops out. Thinking Dixon now if you're Maryland. This is going against Williams. And 
And if you're at Duke University, you do not want any fouls here because you want this clock to be moving. Round four after Duke's big comeback the first time, winning it at overtime. Maryland winning at Cameron. The ACC tournament a tap with a second to go. The rematch tonight. Mm. It certainly has uh, been everything everybody had hoped it would be. And Blake will have to try to calm things here for the second attempt. The biggest comeback, halftime deficit wise, in a national semifinal was Memphis over Providence in 73, down nine at the half. Duke was 11 behind, and this one could set the new record. And that was a Providence team that knocked Maryland out of a chance to come into the Final Four early. One of the two times left he had, yep. Maryland in the Elite Eight. 75 was the other year when Louisville ended their Final Four hopes of Ernie going D. there. Yep. Swinging it around, so 220 to play. Jason Williams again. He's got Miller on him. I think he can take Miller. There he goes. Gives it up. Boozer. What a half he's having. There, there is no defense out there if they're going to put Miller on Jason Williams. He'll go by him time and time again. And the largest lead of the game for Duke is raised to seven. They can't find Dixon. James is on Dixon. He just won't let him have the ball. Holden in the right spot. Morris kept, kept it alive along with Dixon. Something else Mike Krzyzewski is finding out tonight. Boozer can play a lot of minutes. It looks like he is uh, almost back to full shape after sitting down because of that foot injury. His third game back. He went 22 minutes in each of the regional games in Philadelphia. But only had one field goal. And no offense there. That's not the story for Boozer tonight. Now we got Blake back on Williams. Much better matchup, but he goes by him as well. Williams! There's that strength again when he goes inside. Blake with a three. That's not his shot. Hey, Nate James had a solid game as a fifth-year senior. Kind of like Edgerson in that first game. Not spectacular, but doing a very good job. A minute to play with possession and up seven. Well, almost complete for Battier is getting a little closer. He's going to have that one game chance. Well, 50 seconds to go. Duke came back from 10 down at Maryland. Terrapins, can they somehow turn it around? We'll send Battier or Boozer to the line for two. Boozer again, no offense the first two games of this NCAA tournament, but tonight he's got 17, including seven of eight from the field. Well, again, Jim, if when Gary Williams goes back to look at this film, he'll say, why did we not attack Boozer defensively when we had the four fouls on him? He's played a long time with four fouls. And guess who's coming back in? Duhon. Jim, you know, when you start talking about Boozer, in the NCAA tournament, he did not play in the ACC tournament, any one of the three. He did not play against Monmouth. He did not play against Missouri. Then he only took two shots against UCLA, two shots against Southern California, and today he explodes as the inside force that Duke had earlier. 19 for the Knights, and Duhon comes in for the shooter. Boozer, before he shot that second free throw, knowing he was going to be replaced, looked at his teammates and with his hands indicated talk on defense. Nine point game, 40 seconds. Only thing here, if you're Duke, you don't want to foul. Dixon, front of the rim, tipped up. Holden a second time. Look out, look out. Nicholas, another close range chance. Holden, well you can hear look out, look out. the Duke player saying no foul, no foul. But look at how much time Maryland used just to get that ball in the basket. 25 seconds to go. Duke trying to finish off Maryland. Need a break? Nah, I'm good. Come on, you've been watching 225 channels, 12 hours straight. Take a break. All right. We love this stuff, even more than you do. Now get the best in home entertainment with a $200 mail-in rebate. Semifinal history, 22 down in the first half. It would not be the greatest comeback in school history. They one oh, time no. were down 
32 in a game. To Tulane. To Tulane. That's 20, the all 29 at the half back in 1950 to win the game. That was the all-time NCAA record all -time in terms of comeback, right? 32 down in the first half, that 29 at the half. Point. That was the days of Dick Grote. And Dick, then, of course, there was four. the Duke Carolina comeback game. The, the other way, around. Walter Davis, when there wasn't even a three, and it went against him that time. Eight down with 17 seconds in that one. Now, Jim, 22 you know, seconds we, here. Williams with two free throws, and uh, you know, Maryland hoping with that three-point line if Williams, uh, well, could go like he did with that streak earlier in the year, but not there. Jim, we got to think ahead to Monday night. Arizona Duke, 1988. They were in the final four, but never against each other. 1994 in the final four, but not against each other. And here, Lou Olson will be playing against him. This one's over? Yeah, it's over. Well, it is now. Morris gives chase. Williams lays it out. How often we've seen him use that rim to prevent the defender from being able to get to him. He came alive the second half, and he steals it again. Back to back to close it out. Duke with a 33-point turnaround after being down 22. And Mike Krzyzewski goes, wow! He and Gary Williams, good buddies. Gary worked so hard to get here and thought he had Duke on the ropes in that first half, which he did. Duke in Maryland in round four goes to the Devils who lost on senior night by 11. And this time, they put an 11-point curtain This is not on, on Maryland. That was on Coach K's court. This one's a little different. What a championship matchup we have. There wasn't a bad possible combo coming in anyway, but it's Duke and Arizona with an abundance of storylines. Down 39 to 17 at one time. Shane Battier has one more game to play in a Duke uniform. It'll come Monday night. Greg Gumbel and the crew coming up in just a moment. We welcome you back to the Metrodome. Remind you that coming up next here on CBS, Kevin James is the King of Queens. That's next here on CBS. Game two of the national semifinals this evening goes to the Duke Blue Devils by a score of 95 to 84. Let's send you back courtside. Jim Nansen, Billy Hacker. Point turnaround 78 45 after being down 39 17. I want to hear what the message was at halftime. We heard it was a, a little bit spirited in there. Well, it, uh, not so much spirited as much as, you know, we told them we weren't calling any more plays. You know, like I just said, just go down and follow your instincts. And, you know, let's be men. Let's be the team we were, we've been all year long. And let's play defense. And they, they followed their instincts. And, and, and Shane, for you, one game to go. It's against Arizona. Tell me about Monday night. It's going to be a, a special night. Uh, I don't think you could have two better teams, two better coaches, uh, two better traditions in this championship game. Uh, we're really happy to win this game. We know Monday night is going to be a, a special game. Mike, not to take anything away from these guys because they, you have an outstanding team. I think you have had teams, however, that have maybe been more talented, but I don't know if I've ever seen a tougher Duke team in basketball. Well, right? I, is that a fair statement? It is a fair statement. Uh, well, this team has a lot of heart. It's it's a it's the youngest team outside of old man over here. Uh, we're a real young team, so we're prone to you know getting nervous. But the heart of this team, and I think the biggest you know one of the biggest hearts I've coached is Jason Williams, and he put us on his back for a while there in the second half. Some second half, 25 points for the night, and you said all along this is why you came to Duke. Well, you know Duke is the it's the best place for me, and you know I, I love my coach and I, I love our team and. I'm just really happy, you know, we're going to national championship. It's always been a dream of mine, and you know, it's only one more step to make it come true. So, what was it in the second half for you that you did differently, or did well, your I, instincts? What did you? What did they tell you? Well, I was just, you know, playing basketball. I think the first half I was going to try to call too many plays, like Coach said. And, you know, in the second half I just came out and just was just playing and having fun. All right, guys. Good Thank luck you. Monday night. Thanks, Thanks very much. much. And we're going to continue here from the final four in just a moment. It's all set for Monday night. Duke and Arizona. 
As we welcome you back, we will remind you these aerial views are courtesy of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. Goodyear providing aerial coverage of the world's top sporting events for nearly 40 years. Maryland, a loser to Duke. We remind you that following our sign off, Kevin James is the King of Queens. That's next here on CBS. And March Madness 2001 culminates Monday evening. CBS Sports coverage begins at 9 Eastern time with prelude to a championship, followed by the national championship game between Arizona and Duke. Well, for the fourth time this season, Maryland and Duke met, and they uh, went to the advantage went to Duke. Here's Armin Kutsayan. I'm with Coach Williams. Gary, a 22-point advantage at one point finally slips away. What happened? Well, nobody's better than 22 on Duke. So, you know, we played great to get to that 22-point lead. I knew they'd make a run. I thought we had enough uh, to sustain it. But we got into some foul trouble. Uh, they did a great job of coming out and denying and passing lanes, which uh, disrupted our offense. And, you know, we, we had a chance to put the ball in the basket a couple of times. We didn't do it. When it gets close like that, you have to take advantage of your opportunities. And we didn't do that. And uh, you know, Duke made a couple shots. But I really thought it, uh, you know, they, they played very aggressively the second half, and it paid off for them. With Boozer with four fouls, how much of a key was it for, for Duke to keep him in the game? Well, we had two guys, three guys with four fouls at the same time, so we couldn't really take as much advantage of it as we'd like to. They were able to keep Boozer in. We couldn't keep Baxter in. He fouled out. Gary, for you personally, so close and yet one game short. How's that feel? doesn't feel good, uh, but we know what we have to do now at Maryland to get here, which we didn't know before, I think. And whenever nothing's been done like that before, it's always harder to get there. But once you're there, you can at least say to the next team that all things are possible at Maryland. Tremendous effort. Thank you, Coach. Thanks. Tremendous effort indeed. Gary Williams comes up just short. We'll take a timeout and come back with more right after this. We welcome you back to the Metrodome. Want to remind you, coming up next here on CBS, The King of Queens, starring Kevin James and Leah Remini, and our Chevy MVPs of Game 2 tonight. Juan Dixon of Maryland with 19 points. He grabbed eight rebounds for Duke. Shane Battier started slow, finished with 25 points and eight boards in Duke's victory to advance to the championship game. Clark, you expected Maryland to win this game, and for a while there, I think the Terps did the thought they would, too. They certainly played well enough in the first 12 or 13 minutes, but as Bill Walton said at halftime, turnovers really hurt Maryland, but the difference maker was Carlos Boozer. He was terrific at both ends, and I thought the interior defense of Duke in that second half was outstanding. All right, let's look ahead to Arizona against well, Duke on Monday night. Bill, what do you think? A great lesson from Coach K, when he told Billy and Jim there, in an era of overcoaching, he says, forget about plays. Let's just go out there and feed off your instincts. You can't expect Duke to shoot that poorly again. The question for Arizona, can they duplicate the excellence of tonight? It's going to be a wide open running game, the kind of game that all the fans are going to love to see. The pace is going to be terrific. The matchups, who can slow down Battier? Can Wright and Edgerson do anything? The big guys are both playing well. Woods and uh, Boozer, they're terrific. The guards, absolutely special. And then Jefferson, Dunleavy. What more could a basketball guy if ask If you don't for? stop talking, we won't get to Monday night. <laughs> <laughs> we thank you both guys. We'll be back here Monday evening at 9 Eastern with prelude to a championship, followed by the national championship game between Arizona and Duke. Be sure to join us tomorrow, noon Eastern time, for the ultimate road to the championship, followed by the CBS Sports Spectacular, the Erickson Open Men's Final between Andre Agassi and Jan Michael Gamble. And then at 3.30, we'll get you set for the national championship game on the EMC Final Two show, followed at 4.30 by a CBS Sports special, Pistol Pete, The Life and Times of Pete Maravich. We thank you for watching, everyone. We hope you have a good evening. For all of us here at CBS Sports, I'm Greg Gumbel. We'll see you tomorrow.